Hey guys, Robert and Ingrid here. Movie time again. This time we're in my place. Yep. And um, today, well, I showed it off on Twitter a while ago, but we're going to watch Gamera first. Um, we're going to watch a bunch of other movies. We might do more of Gamera if this is good. We might see some other ones. But we're going to do the 90s, the first installment of the 90s, Hesai, I think that's how you say it, era movies, Gamera, Guardian of the Universe. This is the first time I'm seeing it all the way through, and it's the first time she's seeing any Gamera movie. She doesn't even know much about him. This is the first time I've even really heard of this, but it, I skimmed through one of like the fan-made comics, and it seems pretty damn neat. It is. I just to point out, Gamera is one of the best rivals to Godzilla, you know, competition-wise. You know, and not in the same universe, but he's the one that everyone thinks of. When you think of Godzilla, you then think of Gamera as the only other non-Toho creative monster. So keep that in mind when we watch this. And this has also been directed by a guy who, um, he actually would go on to do a couple of Godzilla movies afterwards, including the most recent Shin Godzilla, which he did with the creator of Evangelion. You know about that one, Neon Genesis Evangelion? You know that anime? Yes, I do. It's kind of hard to not know of it. But yeah, he worked co-directed it with that guy. Oh, wow. Yep. So... Expect a lot of, and they, they, these are considered some of the best kaiju movies ever made. Let's see if that still holds up. So, we'll see you on the other side. The giant turtle Gamera, certainly one of the most controversial subjects of our time. Earlier in our program, you stated the belief that Gamera could, in fact, exist. That decision was made by the Commander-in-Chief. I do know that if Gamera exists... Our world is about to face a calamity of enormous proportion. Hey guys, Starship Ingrid here. We just finished Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, and we've decided we're going to do the whole trilogy today. Yep, it's just going to be a kaiju monster marathon today. Yep, so both time frame we first of us, and the, this is both the first time we've seen it, so mm -hmm. what did you think? I thought that was really good. Like, my most experience with, like, kaiju movies before this point was, like, Watching my cousins watch a mo monster movie marathon over Christmas time, it's just like, you kind of know how that is. It's just, it's like a monster slug, but it's just a little ridiculous. Like, everybody is screaming, ah. whether it's the people running in the city or the military people over their intercoms. This one felt like a kaiju movie with a lot more world building and heart to it. Like, you kind of see, oh, what are some of the news reports that are going on? Oh, how are ordinary people reacting to this? Oh. How our there's business no is. More, yes, there's no more fish because the particular fishing operations are shut down because the monster attacked this particular bay or something like that. Exactly. Or the initial reaction of, oh, hey, the good guy monster might actually be the more, would might actually be the more dangerous one, which was sort of like the first reaction. It's just like. Let's capture the other one. Like, oh no, we're it's like, oh, but this is a bigger threat. Cameras here meant to stop it. Who cares? Now, I love the analogy they give. I and mean, they say, but it eats people. If a T-Rex was stomping around uh, around Tokyo, it eats people, but wouldn't you want to capture it to study it? Mm-hmm. That... It's just like, it was all very believable and realistic, even in the, like, the fantastical elements, and even in sort of, like, people's kind of stupid or uninformed reactions to things. Exactly, and... Like, yep. they don't just immediately go, oh, Gamera's the good guy and the Gauss are the bad guys immediately. At first, no. the, the situation looks to complete opposite from a human perspective. And they think, oh, we can handle these birds. But that was the only annoying thing. They kept going to Gauss as birds, which, okay, from a distance, you can see that. And at least once they finally saw it up close, they're saying, they're not birds! They're not birds! But... Sticks be a popular public misconception anyway. Yep, but overall, I mean, the action on this was very well. Some of the best suit works in a long time. This is a case where, as a Godzilla fan like myself, I would say I could definitely say that this, I've heard so much greatness about this trilogy. I can see it. This mm -hmm. was the case where Gamera actually gave the big G a run for his money. Mm -hmm. And since this came out right after Godzilla for this Death Destroyer, it felt like the perfect time. It's like, well. Toho's not going to do Godzilla movies. Let's fill in the void and show that we can actually do something serious. And the director of this and the subsequent two movies actually has done other Godzilla movies where very similar things. Some would say Shin Godzilla, the most recent one, 
it was a lot like this movie, but to the detriment, where it was mostly the political and reaction to the Godzilla's, you know, stuff with very little monsters, which, let's be honest, would you want a whole movie where it's that stuff, or would you at least want to have more monster action? If I wanted to watch political bullshit all day, I'd scroll out down my Twitter feed. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I mean, Gauss, great villain, great setup for the fact that this was a, they don't say directly it was Atlantis. It was a civilization that might have inspired Atlantis or Mue and all those other ancient lost cities. And the fact that they created it and then it's like, oh crud, we made something that still needs food. We're the only food left. Let's uh, uh, let's make something to protect us. Too late. <laughs> now, as the Last Hope comic actually shows, and something that's actually uh, mentioned about in the other movies, from what I understand, we'll see, you know, when we get there, there were more Gameras. Gamera is just the last one standing, and the fact there might be other Gausses is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you think about the English dub? I thought it was pretty good on the whole. We were also watching with the English subtitles to kind of get the differences between, oh, this was the translated Japanese versus this is the dubbed version. But nothing that egregious. Nothing like they completely did new story arcs or something like that was mm -hmm. in a dub. Just tweaks here and there, change a few words like, I can't, instead of saying in the Japanese, I can't feel Gamera's mind, it's I can't feel Gamera's heart. Hmm. I think heart is more fitting. Yeah. Maybe because I'm looking at the Kingdom Hearts stuff you have in your shelf right now. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, there's a lot of that. So, yeah, and I gotta say, one of the female leads were great in this. They took Yes, the, the female leads were just absolutely fantastic. We've got our researcher. And the teenage girl. Um, who was basically kind of linked to Gamera through being able to activate the beads. These beads that they were on top. Now, we don't memorize all their names, unfortunately. It, yeah. We might get her name because she's one of the few reoccurring characters. But we could definitely just simply describe who, what they were. And the voice acting with the dub voice was very good. The fact that the young girl was Steven Seagal's daughter. Hmm. Guess badassness runs in the family, huh? Huh. <laughs> But yeah, and again, just so much of this movie just worked on so many levels. The action was great. It was paced very well. The character interactions were stupendous. I cannot, we cannot wait for what's going to happen in the next one. But was there any complaints at all? Anything besides the birds? Hmm. Oh, I think your cat's moving on something. <laughs> oh, he's gotten in a bag. <laughs> huh. Anything at all. I mean, there must have been at least something to complain about. Hmm. I'm trying to give it to. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of struggling a little bit, and I'm I'm struggling to think of stuff. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, I, I yeah, this was the perfect balance, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. it, again, just the right amount of monster action, just the right amount of um, of you know exposition and everything. Well, actually, that was the other thing I really like was how to explain, for example, oh, wait, Gauss only has one chromosome. How can that be? Because it was created, it never evolved. There wasn't necessarily all of the junk you would normally expect to get in there to, to accumulate over time. It was intentionally made. Actually, there would be one complaint I have. The fact that because you had two different teams trying to come up with it, one focusing on Gauss, one focusing on Gamera, there were some points where one had already established something, and then we'd have to wait for the next one to catch up to that. Like mm -hmm. the whole notion that Gamera was created. The Gam eh, Not Gamera, Gauss was created. Gamera side figured that one out. It took the Gauss side a little while to figure it out. That might be my only complaint. It felt a little like, do we have to bring this up again? We just, we, we just, we already knew that one. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, also, some of the, what you don't see was terrifying. Like, the dog getting snatched. Yeah. Poor doggy. Yeah. And the train getting ripped open. And we're, we knew, we saw a bunch of kids on there, teenagers. And next thing we know, we just see them like, um. And we're saying, like, what did he... Then we see the tape deck fall, or the tape recorder file. You're like, oh, oh, no. Gosh, it's just like, they didn't even really need to show you that much carnage, and you got exactly what just happened. Yeah, again, we just see the stuff in his mouth. We can't tell if they're people or not. And we don't hear screams at that point. We're just hearing dead silence. But once you see that tape player, you're like, oh, man, he ate the kids. Or the teenagers. Yeah. Oh, speaking of it, the kid, that one kid, when they're like... Oh, like, oh, man, when, you know, we're seeing all the real people, you know, reacting to everything. You see that one kid going, rah, rah. Yeah. <laughs> That was hilarious. It was just like, yeah. it's like, a kid would do that. And teenagers would feel like, hey, that's cool. Oh, let's go watch him get destroyed. 
Yeah, it's just like... Boys have their priorities, and the girls are like, boys, go ahead. I got. I love the taxi driver as well that drives the teenager girl towards Mount Fuji. Hmm. You know, where he's all like, oh, I ain't going there that way. But when he gets the opportunity to ram right through a barricade, he's like, oh, I always wanted to do that. You're like... <laughs> Dude, you're bored with life, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get that feeling from him, right? This is the guy who's like, I've been playing it safe. You know what? Screw it. Let's let off a little bit of steam. <laughs> exactly. So, overall, yeah, I give this a 9 or even a 10 out of 10. I would say 9 out of 10. Yeah. It just, like, we'll find out how the rest of the trilogy goes, but this was a great start. And I hear the next two get better. Alrighty then. Well, let's go see what those other two have in store, huh? Yep. We're going to have to do an intro for that one still, so mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll see you guys there. See you tomorrow.